Today we're taking a look at a brand new device, highly requested. This is the Hable Bluetooth smartphone controller, compatible with both iOS and Android. So we'll take a closer look, hang out, we'll be right back. Hey guys, my name is Sam, this is The Blind Life. Here I make videos about living your best blind life and the amazing assistive technology that can help make it better. The device itself is about five inches tall, two and a half inches wide, and about half an inch thick. Roughly the size of the original iPhones. We have a couple things around the edges of the device. On the bottom in the middle, you have the charging port, and this is a USB type C charging port. To the left of the charging port towards the corner, you have the spot where the lanyard attaches. And I was able to put the lanyard in completely by myself, just by feel. I didn't have any issues. It actually went very smoothly. It's a very nice lanyard with the loop being about five inches in length. And it's a nice black and white braided soft material. Nothing on the sides. On the top edge, right in the middle, you have a little rocker switch. This is how you wake up the device. The Hable will put itself to sleep after a certain amount of time of inactivity, and that is designed to save the battery life. On the back, you have some general information, the Hable logo, and you have four little rubber bumps that act as rubber feet. So if it's sitting flat on a surface, it's not gonna slide around on you. And other than the buttons on the front, that is pretty much it around the device. Speaking of those buttons, they are laid out in a very similar pattern to a braille keyboard. In the center of the front, you have six large white buttons. Then on each side of those six buttons, you have a single long skinny button. So one on the left side, one on the right side. This is button seven and button eight. And then you also have the Hable logo printed on the front as well. And that is it for all the buttons and ports. The device itself is black with those white buttons. It kind of resembles a domino, <laughs> but pretty basic, pretty simple, easy to use. So you hold it sideways in both hands with your index, middle, and ring finger of each hand resting on the six buttons in the middle. Your thumbs are on top near where the little rocker button is, and your pinkies kind of hold the bottom, bracing everything nice and securely. And this is how you hold it and control. Tap, 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 tap. If you have the lanyard around your wrist, you are able to easily use the Hable without any restrictions. I will say that it works best on the right hand, the right wrist. If you have the lanyard around your left wrist, you can still hold it here, but there is a little bit of tension on that lanyard when you're holding it in the proper position, but still works fine. It doesn't restrict your movement really at all. As I said, the Hable is a Bluetooth controller for your smart device. And although the buttons resemble a Braille keyboard, you might be thinking, what if I don't know Braille? Will I still be able to use this? And yes, absolutely. Uh, it's very quick to pick up. I don't know Braille myself, but with a real quick training session from the Hable team, um, I was able to pick it up pretty quickly. Now, that's with regards to just controlling your smartphone. When it comes to being able to type out an entire message in Braille, yeah, I, I definitely can't do that. <laughs> Not yet anyway. But that's one of the benefits of using the Hable is it's great for people that are trying to learn Braille or improve their Braille literacy. But regardless, if you don't know Braille, Yes, you will definitely be able to pick this up pretty quickly because essentially you just have to memorize what the buttons do. And with that regard, it's no different than any type of remote control out there. Speaking of how easy it is to use, in fact, the Hable team have really made this very intuitive. A lot of your most commonly used gestures, they've set to the easiest to remember button combinations. First of all, to wake it up, you just slide the little wake up slider here, toggle at the top. You'll feel some vibrations and then another vibration confirming that it is indeed connected to the phone. Right now I've got it connected to my iPhone, but once again, this does support Android as well. If I want to navigate, all I do is hold down the seven button, which is the longest one here on the left. And I tap the eight button, the longest one on the right. Monday. January 23rd, FaceTime, calendar, Monday, YouTube, 782 YT Studio. 
If I want to go back the other way, it's just the opposite. Hold down 8 and tap 7. Outlook. Gmail. YT Studio. YouTube. 782 new items. If I want to choose that item, I just press both the 7 and 8 together. YouTube. Cast. Button. If I'm deep in an application and I want to go back, I just hold down the buttons 1 and 2, which incidentally is the Braille character for B, back. If I want to go back to the home screen, I just hold down buttons 1, 2, and 5, which, you guessed it, is the Braille character for H, home. D clock. 11. 12. And I love that not only with the audio you get from voiceover, but you also get vibration on the device indicating that you're actually doing something. Now, some of the other most commonly used gestures in voiceover would be two-finger tapping gestures. This would be two-finger tap to pause the reading, two-finger double tap to answer and end phone calls, and then even two-finger double tap for dictation. All of these are set to very easy button combinations on the device. For example, if I want to pause the reading, I can just long items. press button YT 1. Gmail. Out. Long pressing button 1 again will resume the reading. Look, WhatsApp, Chase, PayPal. Two finger double tap, also known as the magic button, maybe because it does so many different things. That is just simply long pressing button number 3. If I want to jump to the first item in the list, I just hold down one, two, and three, basically all the buttons on the one side. D clock, 11, 28. If I want to jump to the last item, it's just holding down buttons four, five, and six, or all the buttons on the right side. Once again, because they've made it so intuitive, it's easy to learn. Doc, camera. If I want to scroll left or right to move my home screen over by a page, that, once again, super easy to do. If I want to move to the right, I just hold down all the odd numbers, 1, 3, and 5. Page 2 of 6, Messenger. Page 3 of 6, Shortcuts. If I want to move back to the left, I just hold down all the even numbers, 2, 4, and 6. Page 2 of 6, Messenger. Home. Page 1 of 6, D clock, 11. 30. So, like I said, once you learn these basic commands, you'll really be flying through your phone in no time. Now, this doesn't have commands for certain more high-level gestures, but 99% of the people, 99% of the time, not going to need to do those high-level gestures. Honestly, I use voiceover every single day. I train voiceover, and I literally never use those advanced gestures, so it's not something that's going to be missed. But one thing I do use all the time is Siri, and of course you've got a gesture for that. If I hold down 1, 4, and 5... Home. What time is it? It's 11.33 a.m. Thank you. One of the nice things about the Hable is that you can connect it to multiple devices. So if you have an iPhone and an iPad, or you're like me and you carry two phones with you, even if one's an iOS device and one's an Android device, it's no problem. It will automatically connect to whichever Bluetooth is within range. But now I have it connected to my Android, and another great thing is that a lot of the commands, a lot of the buttons are the exact same for iOS and Android. So, if I want to navigate forward on the screen, I hold down the 7 button and press the 8. Gmail. Gallery. The YouTube. If I want to go back, Gallery. the opposite. Gmail. The Play Store. If I want to choose this item, I just tap the 7 and 8 at the same time. Play Store. Search. Button. Jumps me right in there, and then I can once again navigate forwards. Voice Search. Signed in as Samuel Selected, Top Charts, Tab, 2 of 4. If I need to get back to the home screen, it's 1, 2, and 5. Nova 7, Play Store, Out of List. And we're back in our home screen. And that was a quick look at Hable. Now, what type of situations might this be helpful in? Well, I already talked about how easy it is to use, and even if you're not a Braille user like myself, still pretty quick to pick up. Well, that's why this would be a great option for anyone that can't use a smartphone for whatever reason. Maybe they can't learn voiceover gestures, or maybe don't have the patience to learn voiceover gestures for whatever reason, but they still need a way to control their accessible smartphone. The Hable would be a great option for them. And speaking of that, there's tons of training material available on the Hable website in several accessible formats.
I also talked about how the Havel could be used for learning Braille or furthering your Braille literacy. But the other thing is just convenience. Ideally, you would want to use the Havel with a set of headphones because then you could leave your phone in your pocket or in your bag, leave it sitting on the table and not even need to pick it up. This is gonna make it very helpful for people that commute, maybe back and forth to work, back and forth to school. You guys know as well as I do, we spend a ton of time either riding as a passenger in a car or on public transportation. So using the Hable to access your smart device at that time could be a good option for some people. That includes even just walking around. You could attach a longer lanyard to the device and have it hanging around your neck. And as you're walking along, if someone calls or sends you an email, you could quickly grab it and reply, all without needing to pull the phone out of your pocket or out of your bag. The Hable One, which is the full name of this device, is available now. The pricing is right around $350. If you would like to learn more about it or pick one up for yourself, I will have all of the links and contact information listed below. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video and found it helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel, turn on notifications. I post new videos every single week about amazing cutting edge assistive technology. But that is it for this one, guys. As always, Sam with The Blind Life, I will see you next time.